All right, well, welcome, everybody. I'm glad you're here. Um, like we established earlier, this is Engineering Economy. I'm Dr. Waite. And this is one of my favorite teach, uh, courses to teach. I really like Engineering Economy. I think it's uh, pretty interesting and is applicable to all of the majors within uh, our college. So I hope you enjoy it this semester as much as I do. Um, I don't think I've had most of you in any classes before. I, I see a handful of familiar faces, but uh, for the most part, we haven't met. So I'll just tell you a little bit about uh, how I'm going to be running the course this semester. You'll notice, first of all, that I'm wearing a microphone. And that's because I record all of my class lectures. And then I'll post them on YouTube. And uh, that can be useful if maybe we're doing uh, something with Microsoft Excel that you need to see another time, or if there was an example that you didn't quite follow, or if you're sick one day. All those will be recorded and posted on YouTube. And uh, I'll post a link to my YouTube channel in MU Online so that those lectures are easy to find. I'll also start each lecture with an announcement slide where I kind of summarize what you need to be uh, thinking about and what's on the horizon. So if we look at uh, today's announcements, you can see that I'm going to be giving you an introductory assignment today that's due on Thursday by noon. And uh, this assignment and all of the so assignments we do this semester are going to be submitted electronically. And so you'll never print out your work and give it to me. You'll never email it. Uh, the only way that you'll submit homework assignments this semester is through MU Online. I'll give a brief demonstration today uh, using an app called Cam Scanner, which is kind of a useful way to make PDF files. So for this uh, announcement here, the assignment is due on Thursday by noon. I think that uh, for most students, that'll probably take maybe 20, 25 minutes to complete that introductory assignment. It's mainly uh, for me to get to know you a little bit better, understand your background, a couple of thought-related questions to kick off the semester. So I hope you'll find it relatively easy. I've already handed out uh, the syllabus for the course. Did anybody still need that? Did enough go around? All right, so we'll take a few moments to go over that. And then I'll also uh, show you the schedule. Then we'll do the cam scanner demo. And then, uh, presuming we still have some time left over, we'll actually get into the course material today and talk about interest rates. So before we go over the syllabus, uh, are there any questions so far on the things that I've mentioned? Yeah. Uh, on your recorded lectures, do you also record the screen? Yeah. Yeah, so it's audio. And then it's also the PowerPoint slides that I'll show. Um, and then uh, when I'm showing you like solutions to examples, rather than writing it on the whiteboard, what I'll do is I'll put the solution to the examples um, as a PDF on the screen so that uh, those solutions end up in the recording as well. So I, I do everything I can to try and make it uh, everything that you'll see in class. But of course, the experience is completely different. And uh, the students who usually get a D or an F in the class are the ones who think, oh, I'll just watch the video. And then sometimes they don't watch the video. Sometimes they skip through it really quickly, but uh, consistently, the students who get an A or a B in the class are the ones who are here every class meeting and then use the video as kind of a supplementary or a backup rather than a substitute for good attendance. So I try and make these videos as comprehensive as they can be, but really it's just not the same thing as being in class. And so sometimes I have a little bit of a mixed feeling of even making it available at all because it sends the wrong message to some people. What's MU I'll show you uh, MU Online. It's basically. Uh, what do we call it? Blackboard. Blackboard? Oh. Yeah, MU Online is just the branded name for Blackboard. You know, at my previous university, they called it iLearn. So I might once or twice uh, refer to it in that way. But yeah, so MU Online, why don't I just show you now? It is where you can get into uh, seeing all of your classes. And uh, for our course, if you click on Engineering 222, you'll notice that the, uh, the syllabus and the schedule are already posted online. And here's that homework one. And if you click on that homework one, um, it'll bring up, here's the PDF. You can see that that's a link. So here are the questions, just some brief getting to know you questions. And then the way that you uh, submit it is you can either uh, type it up in Word and uh, upload the uh, .docx file, or you can print a PDF of it from Microsoft Word. No, I'm not against that. Yeah, that would be fine. So um, 
yeah, you can, uh, even if you want, although it's not ideal, you could type your, you type your responses right there within the browser. But be sure that after you're done with that, you click Submit. Because sometimes someone would like upload the file and then just close their browser without actually clicking Submit. And then their file isn't uploaded. And uh, one of the policies I'm going to mention when we go over the syllabus is that there's no second chances when it comes to submitting homework. Um, you know, on the one hand, I'm really strict about you meeting that deadline and not pestering me for uh, uh, exceptions to, to the assignment requirements. But then on the other hand, I try and be a little bit generous because I'll drop the two lowest uh, homework grades of the semester. So if you forget one and if you just don't feel like doing one assignment, you could still get 100% in the course. So I try and balance it out a little bit. So, but you know, I, I know that uh, the system's a little bit inflexible. You actually do have to go through the correct process of browsing to the file and clicking submit and so on. Um, I try and set up all of the assignments, though, so that if you upload the wrong file, you have unlimited attempts available until the deadline. And so if you upload an assignment and you realize you forgot a problem, you could still upload it another time uh, up until the, the due date and due, di uh, due time for the assignment. Does that make sense? Yeah. Well, all right, well, let's get into this syllabus. Uh, let me close out of here, and I'll even bring the syllabus up on the screen as we follow along. Now, in the table here is just some of the basic stuff, uh, like where my office is located. I'm up on the third floor of this building. You've got my phone number and email address, my office hours. Now, the office hours are the times when I'll definitely be in the office, and I'm really glad to see you during those office hours for any questions you've got related to the course or related to your career. You know, anything I can do to help you out during those office hours, I'm glad to. Um, outside of those office hours, I'm also glad to meet with you, but we'll need to make an appointment because sometimes I'm in other buildings on campus going to meetings or I might be working on some research. So outside of the office hours, you can just check and see if I'm available, and I'll do my best to accommodate you. I'll mention that there's a really long list of university policies here. Um, once in your life, you should go through all of these and just kind of see what are the rules that govern your student experience here at Marshall. Uh, we won't go through all of them because I think that um, maybe you've done it before. But um, the, the first kind of unique thing I want to point out is our textbook. Um, am I right in remembering I sent you an email before the semester with some details about that textbook? Did I do that? Or am I dreaming? I'm dreaming. All right. Well, there's this textbook. And uh, now you've got the ISBN for it. It's available over in the bookstore. Has anybody already purchased it? Do you have it here today? Yeah, could you pull it up and hold it so everybody can see what it looks like? Um, they have it available. There it is. It's got a basket of money on the front cover. So that looks pretty good. I'd love that basket of money. Uh, where did you get it? I got it online. Online? Did you rent it or did you buy it? You bought it. I think it's available for rent for pretty cheap. Um, if you check, you may be able to rent it for as little as like $30 for the semester. Uh, now, it's important stuff, and I'd always prefer that you buy the book and cherish it for the rest of your life. But if you want to rent it, then that's fine too. I don't judge. So the textbook's important, and we're going to start having assignments that are related to problems in that book, and you need to be following along with the reading uh, pretty soon. So order the book today if you haven't already. All right, um, now let's go word through word on these course requirements here because these are important things. Attendance and classroom behavior. Students are, attended to, are expected to attend class meetings and arrive in the classroom before the lecture begins. Students should not leave the classroom during the lecture. Mobile phones must be put away and not used during class. Graded items missed due to unexcused absences cannot be made up. Uh, so any questions about that first section on attendance and classroom behavior? Um, I have such a short attention span and I'm so easily distracted that I find it really challenging to focus my mind if people are coming in these side doors after the class uh, lecture begins. And so that's part of the reason why I ask you to be here before the meeting actually starts. And the same kind of thing with going in and out during the lecture. You know, we're only here for 50 minutes. And so please yeah, use the bathroom, get a drink of water, do all the things you need to do before our relatively short class meeting. And then that way we can just focus on the task at hand while we're in here together. 
Now, mobile phones, I realize that sometimes in theory you could use your mobile phone as a calculator, but I think it's better if you get in the habit of using like the real engineering calculators. And so please bring a, a calculator to each class so you don't have to rely on your mobile phone. All right, computers. Microsoft Excel will be used extensively in this course, and students are encouraged to install the software on their personally owned computers. If you have technical problems, contact Marshall Information Technology Service Desk. Um, some of you may have Mac computers, and that's great, but the problem is over time you're going to find more and more of your software is, uh, not PC, is only PC compatible. And so you can install Boot Camp or um, you know, like a virtual machine on your Mac to run Windows software. But my point is, is if you're going to buy a computer, maybe just this semester, I'd encourage you to go ahead and just get a cheap PC. Like the cheapest PC you can buy is going to be fine to get you through your engineering career, as far as all the software I've seen. You know, we're not uh, you know, doing really computationally intense stuff at the undergraduate level. So, um, Microsoft Excel, you should have access to it on a laptop. And if you don't have a laptop, there are some over in the library that you can check out on a 24-hour basis. But it's better if you have access to your own uh, machine. Online lectures. A portion of the course's lectures will be delivered asynchronously online. Now, asynchronously means I record it in advance. We don't actually meet together. And you just watch the lecture video. Uh, there may be three or so uh, lectures during the semester where I'll post the video and then everybody just watches the video. We won't have a class meeting occasionally. It, it'll be the exception rather than the rule. On those video lectures, students are still required to view and participate in these lectures prior to the next live class meeting and are responsible for the content and announcements as with any other lecture. So. Uh, usually what we'll do is, uh, after a recorded lecture, the very next class meeting we'll have a brief quiz for me to uh, give you an incentive to watch and pay attention to the video. And just kind of, um, you know, to check up and make sure that people understood that material. Electronic homework submission. Uh, students must electronically submit each homework assignment to MU Online before the deadline. Late work is not accepted without a university-sanctioned excuse. Now, those university-sanctioned excuses are usually for, like, if you're on the football team and you'll be out of town, or if you uh, are personally ill and have a doctor's note, then that can be university-excused. And so there's a relatively um, narrow interpretation of what the university will excuse as an absence. On the back page is the grading scale. You know, how your final grade is going to be determined, these weighting. Uh, percentages, I'm going to create a grade book on MU Online. And at any time in the semester, you can go to the grade book and see what your current course average is. Now, early on in the semester, it could fluctuate really rapidly when we have so few graded items. You know, when it's just one assignment and one quiz, it may look like, ah, I'm failing the course, maybe because you just did poorly on those first two little items. So don't let that get you in a panic early on if you know, if it seems unusually low or unusually high or if it's fluctuating a lot, you know, after the first several weeks, then the, uh, the grade averages will start to stabilize and be more indicative of really where things are headed. OK, so uh, homework assignments, I give some additional emphasis on the fact that uh, late work isn't accepted, that you will have those two lowest homework assignments dropped. Um, I'm pretty. Um, insistent on this academic dishonesty policy that students turn in their own work. So anything you put your name on and submit to me needs to be what you did. It's not what uh, a group of you did. It's what you did. And it's not what you found online and kind of worked on yourself and kind of checked the solution online. That's not what I want to see. And it's certainly not just what you copied from a new, another student's paper. Those would all be frowny faces. If you look at the acceptable behavior versus the unacceptable behavior, so what's OK, it, it's still OK to talk about the homework assignments with other students. You know, to discuss, even in the specific, it's OK, it's okay to discuss the details of an assignment with another student. But don't sit next to each other working on it in parallel, because then inevitably what happens is, one person is going to work a little bit faster than the other one is. 
and the one who would be naturally a little bit slower won't get that same learning experience. You know, they won't struggle with the material and independently go through the process of getting stronger through struggling. You know, in the same way that you can't go to the, the rec center and lift weights by having someone do the lifting for you, your brain only gets smaller, smarter. <laughs> we don't want a smaller brain. <laughs> your brain only gets smarter if you do the intellectual heavy lifting. So do discuss the homework problems with another student. That's fine. Do. It's OK to check your answers to make sure you did it right. And if you find mistakes, it's OK to help other students learn and find their mistakes, but it's unacceptable to show someone every step of a problem. It's unacceptable to actually give your paper to someone else, because then they might copy it. And it's not OK to group work problems simultaneously. So I screen incoming assignments for inappropriate collaboration. And my grader, this will be the third semester I'm working with my grader in this course. And she knows all the tricks. and. Um, you know, I know that the solution manual for our textbook is posted online, but uh, I also know it's riddled with errors. And so if you copy those same errors that are in the online solution manual, then um, it's going to be really obvious if you've consulted an unauthorized resource. So just do your own work, and it's the best for your learning, and there won't be any problems. Any questions about this academic dishonesty policy? OK, um, on the third page is the table of um, learning outcomes and how they're going to be practiced. So uh, for each of our learning outcomes, you can see what assignment is associated with that outcome and how I'm going to be assessing whether you've achieved it. That's not so critical for you to know. Uh, but what is pretty important if we switch now to uh, on the last page, it is the schedule. And uh, I think this schedule is so important because you can see for every day what we're going to be studying. You can see what is the corresponding textbook chapter. You can see for the entire semester when every assignment is due, uh, the subject of each assignment. Here it's even listing our final exam. Friday, the 10th of May. That's the last day of finals. We've got to stick around to the very end, guys. Really sorry about that. But. So uh, this schedule kind of shows you what we're going to be doing. And uh, if you need to review a, a lecture, for example, uh, on the videos, then this can be useful to help you find exactly which lecture video you want to review, You know, if there's a certain topic that you want to revisit. So you, you know, even though I do give those announcements at the beginning of each class, you can also use uh, this uh, schedule to kind of keep track of what you need to submit and when. So any questions so far? All right. Uh, so we've done the syllabus. We've done the schedule. Now, um, the assignments need to be submitted as a PDF to Blackboard slash MU Online. And um, you can use a flatbed scanner if you've got one of those, uh, or some copy machines. You can you know, put a stack of papers in it and type in an email address and press scan. And then what it'll do, instead of making a paper copy, it'll scan that and email it to you. But I think one of the easiest ways to make a PDF is with an app that's called Cam Scanner. And uh, so let me demonstrate to you how Cam Scanner works. This is how it's spelled. Cam scanner. And uh, once you've downloaded and installed it, then uh, you just browse to it. Um, you need to create an account because what it does is it will scan and make a PDF on your device, and it'll also upload that PDF to the cloud. And so I'm just going to take a picture of the syllabus to give you an illustration. Um, what you do is there's a button on it, it's the ubiquitous you know, like camera symbol. It's pretty obvious that you're Enabling the camera, you just try and make it well lit. You know, you don't go into the closet and take a picture of a dark page, and you don't cast a heavy shadow on it. You just have to kind of, you know, start with a relatively okay image, and then what it does is it automatically kind of uh, suggests where the edges of the paper are. You can't see this, but what it does is, you know, like, if you're at a little bit of an angle, 
it'll try and correct for that. So once you've got it rotated correctly and the, the border is defined, you just do the check mark and it kind of corrects it. And then down at the bottom, now this is really important. See where it says here, black and white PDF? You want to scan not to color, not to grayscale, scan to black and white. And it's after taking the picture that you get that option. So right now I'm going to scroll sideways to B and W. And the reason why you want it to be black and white is not only are the file sizes smaller, but there's a lot better contrast and the image is more sharp. So if you scan in color, it's going to be about 10 times the size uh, and it's not going to be as clear. But by making it black and white, it's forcing everything to either white or black and so it improves the contrast. And so as soon as you do that, then uh, it uploads to the cloud. And so I've logged on to my cam scanner account here. And let's take a look at that. Um, the file name is related to the time the picture was taken. And so 2019-01-14, that's today's date, and 12-21. So that's the picture that I just took. And if I click on it, it'll bring it up on the screen. And that's you know what I just took a picture of. And it, you know, it's pretty clear, considering it was just like, I don't have a nice phone, and it doesn't have a great camera, and it's, it's taking a, a perfectly acceptable for you know, the, the, the image quality we need for your homework submissions, it's going to work out just great. So you get it online here, and then you can click download, and it gives you the option of if you want a JPEG or a PDF. <coughs> so you should do PDF, and it, you can download it to some location. I'm going to save it to a location I'll be able to find later, because remember, you have to upload this to MU Online. So I just create some folder that I know I'll be able to find later. And then might as well open it just to see how it looks. All right, looks great. Any questions about cam scanner? And if, if I wanted to add additional pages to that same JPEG, all I need to do is just take another picture. So that, that camera icon is still there. And so it'll show multiple ch pages in the same file. It's really easy to use. If you have any uncertainty about it or any problems, please come see me, and I'll be happy to help you out. OK, yes? Like the first assignment where it's already like a Word document, yeah. you can just turn it into a Word document. Exactly. Yeah, you don't need to. Anytime you've got an electronic version of something, whether it's Word or if you're working in Excel, you don't need to print it out and rescan it. Because you know it was digital to begin with. You can just use that original file. But if it's something handwritten, that's where I think that the cam scanner is going to be useful. So thank you for asking that, because that, that I think uh, sometimes people have the same question. Are there other questions? Yeah. You don't need to bring your book to class. Um, and I'll try and announce when you need to bring your laptop. I'll try and give you a reminder of the uh, class before. But there will be a stretch where you'll need to bring it every day for several weeks. But it'll be obvious when we're in that stretch. But um, you don't need to bring it until I give you a warning. Thank you for asking that. Are there other questions? All right. I think we covered a lot of this stuff already. Let's talk about interest. How many of you have ever borrowed money before? A lot of you are borrowing money for school, right? And, uh, and that can really add up quickly. And so you may have already had a first exposure to interest. Um, but let's begin by discussing some terminology here. And uh, specifically, we're going to focus on perspective, like the perspective of the person who's loaning the money and the perspective of the person who's borrowing money. Uh, now, interest rate can be thought of as the uh, annualized percentage of the privilege that's paid for borrowing money. And so if you've got a borrower who's taking a loan, what they have to give back is the repayment of that original principal, which is the original amount that was borrowed, and interest. But from the perspective of the person who's investing or loaning the money, sometimes we call it the rate of return rather than interest rate. And the formula is the same. If you want to calculate the numeric interest rate, 
you can use the same formula that you'd use to calculate the rate of return. It's just that when you're the person who's borrowing the money, you think of it as the interest rate, whereas when you're the person loaning the money, you think of it as the rate of return. So um, it's a matter of terminology. Now, interest is a manifestation of the time value of money. And this is probably the biggest concept of the whole semester, time value of money. The idea of the time value of money is that money in the future isn't as valuable as money today. And so think of it this way. What if I offered you $1,000 now or $1,000 in five years? Which would you take? Most people would take $1,000 now, unless they kind of don't trust themselves and they want to delay gratification. But most of us would recognize that it's better to have the money now. And it's not just because of immediate gratification. There's actually a rational reason besides just like, you know, not wanting to wait. Um, think about prices of things over time. Have your parents ever gone over that with you about like how much a candy bar cost in their day or... You know, a gallon of gasoline was 78 cents, that sort of thing. You've heard that, right? Everybody's heard that. And so that, what that's talking about is how prices always seem to be increasing. So now that $1,000, if I give you $1,000 now, you can buy a lot of stuff. But in five years, you won't be able to buy as many things because prices are always going up. So if the amount of money is the same now and in the future, the value of what you can buy in the future is lower. So that's kind of the first exposure to this idea, time value of money. And we're going to come back to this a lot of different times. But interest is how we overcome the, um, the hesitancy that someone would have to loan you money that isn't going to be worth as much in the future. Because what if you know, we all know that the $1,000 in five years isn't worth as much? So think about a bank. If you went to a bank and you said, I'd like to borrow $1,000, and in five years, I'm going to repay you $1,000. That would be bad from their perspective, because they know that same number of dollars isn't going to buy as much in the future. So you have to kind of incentivize them to loan you the money. And the way that you incentivize is that you pay back more than you originally borrowed to account for the time value of money. So you can think of it as the fee that you're paying to use someone else's money. You can think of it as, you know, from a numerical standpoint, interest is a dollar amount, and it's the difference between the ending amount and the beginning amount. So the amount you borrowed and the amount you pay, the difference between the, uh, the total amount and the initial amount is the interest. Amount owed after some time minus the principal. And the principal is the beginning amount of a loan. Now, I see many of you taking notes. That's a really good habit. Uh, by the way, these notes are going to be posted on MU Online for the entire semester uh, at the end of today. So you'll be able to print out all of the notes in any format that you like. Because what I do is I post them as full page, so like one slide per page two slides per page, three, four, and six. And so if you really want to cram a lot of information onto a single page, you can do that. You know, if you want to have some space in the margins to write your notes, you can choose which, whichever format you'd like. I wanted to have that posted before class today so I could show it to you, but I just ran out of time. So I'm glad you're taking notes today. And uh, on Wednesday, maybe what you can do is print out all those notes and put it in a binder and then copy down your thoughts adjacent to the slides themselves. OK, so interest rate is when we uh, express the interest amount in terms of uh, an elapsed time. So it's a percentage of the principal during an increment of time. So here's the formula for that, for the interest rate. It's the interest accrued per time unit. So that's a certain amount of interest that you're going to be either earning or paying during a time unit. And the most common time unit would be a one-year period. Interest rates are very often expressed in terms of an annual percentage rate. And then you divide that as a, a 
fraction of the original investment amount, the principal, and multiply it by 100, and that's interest rate. Now, rate of return, same formula. It's some incremental amount divided by the original amount, in other words, divided by the principal, and you multiply it by 100 to turn it into a percentage. The borrower thinks of it as an interest rate that's been paid. The lender or the investor thinks of it in terms of a rate of return. Okay, one other way to look at it is the amount that's due at year one is the initial loan amount plus the initial loan amount multiplied by the interest rate. And the reason why I put that formula on the screen is I'm going to give you an in-class exercise. And that's another way that I do things is um, I don't want to get up here and just talk for 50 minutes. Because uh, I've been teaching now, uh, this is my 14th year teaching college, and I've learned that the less I talk, the more you learn. Right? Um, that's unfortunate, but I'll try and give you a little bit of a lecture, and then I'll give you some... Um, in-class exercise where you can apply and kind of practice out these equations and ideas so that the, the thinking is that when you get to the homework assignment, you're not like lost. You've already done a bunch of problems that are related to the homework assignment, and it makes it easier to kind of get into it. And then the homework assignment prepares you for the quiz. And once you've had the experience with uh, testing your knowledge in the quiz, then you're ready for the exam. So I try and make that transition like gradual and progressive so that everyone feels com uh, comfortable along the way. So we'll do these in-class exercises every class meeting. Um, I'll have 44 of them. And that's another reason why I think it's a good idea for you to have a three-ring binder, is that these will be uh, punched out. And most of the time, you'll take it with you, and you can use it as a resource to solve the homework. Um, sometimes I'll take it with me, and uh, I'll give you points for participation. Uh, those will go into your homework grade. And, and today, for instance, you'll notice that at the top of the page, I'm asking you to write your name. And that's because before you leave the classroom, I'd like you to put your paper uh, on this chair on, you on your way out. And uh, I'm going to record everybody who's here today and everybody who gives it their best shot on the in-class exercise. You're going to get some uh, homework points for that. Now these, I encourage collaboration and teamwork on these in-class exercises. You know, all, all the stuff I said about uh, you need to work alone, that's really for the homework and obviously for the exams and quizzes. But these in-class exercises, once I turn you loose to work on these, it can get noisy in here. You can talk to each other. It no longer has to be like quiet as church once you're working on the in-class exercise. In fact, I, uh, I kind of like it when things get a little bit rowdy because I think that's a, an indicator that you're learning if you're actually discussing. So there's three problems here. We've got about 15 minutes, and I think that's the perfect amount of time. And uh, at the end of that time period, I'm going to bring the solutions up on the screen just to make sure we're all on the same page. Did everybody get a copy of the uh, in-class exercise? Okay, um, I've had uh, one and two up on the screen already. So for problem one, the total amount at the end of the one year is 21000 Pretty easy there. Uh, you know, how much is the principal? How much is the interest? So 20000 that's what we call the principal. The interest is the, the payment you give as a, as a thank you to the bank for the privilege of borrowing that for the one year duration. 6% is because what we're doing is we're saying it's the interest amount, so the increment of interest divided by the original 200000 Now, on this third problem, there's two steps. And it doesn't matter which one you do first. I started by the currency conversion and then did the time value of money conversion. You can flop it and get the same thing. So 
So first of all, I said if you have 55,123.45 Icelandic krona, how many United Arab Emirates dirhams do you get? So you divide by 35.25 krona per dirham, and you get 1563.79 AED. And that's the, the final value. That's today, one year later. What we want to know is what was the equivalent number of dirhams at the beginning? And so the conceptualization of that is the amount at year one after interest has been added in, it's the initial amount, so the principal plus the, in, uh, the interest. And the interest amount is the principal times the interest rate. So this second term here is the interest, which is principal times interest rate. So in the end, you should get 1518.24 AED. How many people got that? All right. Feel free to correct it if you didn't quite get there on your paper. Please put your paper on this uh, chair on your way out so I can give you homework points for your participation today. Remember the thing that you need to be working on. Number one, get the textbook. Number two, do the, in, uh, the introductory assignment. That's due before Thursday at noon. I'll see you on Wednesday.